Hello and welcome to my very first Sherlock Holmes stream. Um, I'm calling this the Games of Foot. Uh, my name is Eddie Webb. Uh, for those who don't know, um, I am a uh, freelance video game and narrative designer, uh, and I've also been a lifelong Sherlock Holmes fan. Uh, and so I've been doing some just chatting streams uh, on the Onyx Path Twitch stream. Uh, and I figured I have everything set up anyway, and I have a whole bunch of Sherlock Holmes video games. So I thought it might be a good chance to actually talk about both game design, narrative design, and also just cool Sherlock Holmes stuff as I go through my ever-growing backlog. And also replaying some games I haven't played in a very long time. Um, so uh, this is my first time trying to do a video game stream, so definitely, you know, maybe some bumps and problems along the way. So I appreciate any advice you all have as I'm working on this. Uh, but today I'm going to play The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. Um, this is uh, an electronic arts game. Uh, it is put out in 1992. I don't know when this CD-ROM was actually released and the software was created in 92. So the game itself is 28 years old. This is a little bit newer. Um, and I managed to uh, rip the files off that CD-ROM um, toss them onto my Windows machine. Uh, I got them installed using uh, DOSBox, and then I have it run through Scum VM. Um, so it, it seems like it's been working out really great. Uh, so let's give this a shot. Um, transition over here. As you see, I got my Scum VM ready to go here. Let's do this. A little bouncy EA stuff here. London, England, November 1888. I have some thoughts about that once we go through the introduction here. Hello, Elva Zion. an alley behind the Regency Theater. That guy's totally not nefarious at all. Oh, that was Zion. Uh, started watching Elementary based on my Twitter thread. So cool. I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's, it's definitely worth it. Oh, she's in trouble. Early the following morning on Baker Street. Hey Jay, how you doing? Thanks for hanging out. I do want to talk over this high quality of voice acting you guys are experiencing or the best that 1992 has to offer.
Mm. That's weird. Yeah, it's just like dark desktop audio is not working. All right. One sec. Um, looks like desktop audio is not coming through. Let me double check. Make sure that's working right. Um, doo -doo -doo. Sorry about this. They worked earlier. I'd like to hear the music and whatnot. It's not the best in the world, but it is, is pretty iconic. If not, then we'll just plow on ahead. Sounds not necessary for this game. No, still not playing desktop audio. Hmm. All right. Well, we will plow on ahead, and I will figure this out another time. Uh... Uh, but anyhow, um, uh, so yes, this is a uh, text adventure. It's definitely in the uh, vein of the Lucasfilm Arts games that were kind of the, the competitors to Electronic Arts at the time. Um, so you can see a lot of stuff that's similar to it. In fact, um, the so-called scum interface actually developed by LucasArts, this is going to look very similar if you've seen it, but it's not identical. But obviously it's more enough that it was able to be run in this virtual machine. Um, uh, so, uh, let me catch up in the chat here. Um, uh, yeah, Lestrade asking for help. That's it's actually not uncommon in the canon uh, that Lestrade would, would ask for help. It would always be kind of begrudgingly. Um, and certainly when he was in his, out of his out of his depths. Um, so that's not unusual. Uh, uh, I did want to say earlier that um, 1888, this is the uh, year of the Ripper murders originally, so it makes sense that um, Scotland Yard would feel like this murder case is probably related to the Jack the Ripper murders. Uh, it's also, canonically speaking, relatively early in Holmes' career. Um, the actual dates are a little up in the air based on different Sherlockian scholarship, but um, you will note that uh, um, the, the final problem uh, where Holmes quote died was uh, 1891. He comes back in 1896, um, maybe off in those years. Um, but the uh, point is, is that this is before his confrontation with, Mor confrontation with Moriarty. Uh, so I'll go ahead and read the dialogue then for everybody's benefits here. And hello, Yoda, I'm glad you could make it. So hopefully that answers your question, Jay, about where this falls into the guideline. Yes? Begging your pardon, madam. This is a note from Mr. Holmes from Inspector Lestrade, Scotland Yard. I you could turn the sound off so I don't hear it in my headphones. Oh, very well. I'll see that he gets it. Thank you, Constable. Also, the slow walk as a staple of these original older games. Have you been sufficiently fortified by Mrs. Hudson's murderous coffee, Watson, to put your mind to this mystery? Whatever are you on about home so early in the morning? I'm sorry to interrupt your reading, old man. Mrs. Hudson just delivered a very intriguing note. Would you care to pursue it? By all means. Mr. Holmes, a young woman has been brutally murdered outside the Regency Theater in Oxford Street. The evidence here suggests that Jack the Ripper has emerged from under his rock in Whitechapel and struck savagely in Mayfair. Despite your contention that the Ripper work is without motive, and therefore not suited to your methods, I believe you would find this case of interest, and the Yard would be most grateful to hear your opinions. G. Lestrade. Yeah, look for the... I will not deny his request, Watson. If you accompany me, I should be glad to have you at my side. With pleasure, Holmes. Lestrade seems finally to have recognized the value of your investigative techniques. <laughs> Spoiler, he hasn't. My blushes, Watson. Your compliment will turn my head. Let us see if I am truly worthy of it. And then we'll have the credits here. Um, 
Evil Hamster asks, which one of the old and brutal ones is this? I'm not sure the, what, what you're asking there. Um, uh, but yes, as, as Jay points out, um, uh, there are the random hums and touches. Uh, he's smoking a cigarette as opposed to a pipe. Um, his violin's in the background at the bubbling fask. Um, the, the, the bullet holes are actually on the left side. If you see, you can't see it now with this graphic. Um, but the uh, Victoria Regina uh, bullet holes are actually there on the wall where Holmes took uh, practice shots against his wall while Watson was rooming with him. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, oh yes, okay. Um, that. Evil Hamsters, I remember the case with the Rose Tattoo, and that was brutal with his puzzles. This is right before the Rose Tattoo, um, although it is all VGA. It doesn't have the uh, um, uh, video not montages. Um, so it is. I am reliably informed this is actually also pretty brutal in its setup. And in fact, um, now that we're past the credits, I'm going to take a quick uh, side thing here. Um, and you'll note I have here a uh, PDF I managed to find of the uh, Sherlock Holmes clue book. Uh, this was on um, one of the abandoned wear sites. Um, and while I, I was able to purchase everything else uh, as, as well as I could, I couldn't find a copy of this anywhere else, so I got a PDF of it. And this was a book that was sold alongside uh, the book to give hints and clues uh, throughout the game. This is kind of the closest the, the 90s had to walkthroughs at the time. So I will definitely be using this to help us get through this case. I am not great at these. Um, so, as I mentioned before, uh, if you're familiar with the LucasArts games, um, you'll see that this is very similar. There are your uh, verbs on the bottom, uh, and you basically use the verb and then use a pointer to interact with uh, something in the screen uh, to be able to do things. Um, this game uh, was a little bit newer than some of the early Scum games, so it actually has uh, default verbs. So, if I point to the sideboard here, you'll see at the bottom that look is depressed. So it will default to looking at something. Uh, if I hold over Watson, it will default to talking to Watson. So there was a little bit of default clicking, but also if you want something besides the default, you're going to have to manually select the verb and, and, and choose it. Um, also to go back to, Jay mentioned about uh, the touches. There's the uh, bullet holes I mentioned, uh, the Victoria and Regina. Um, there's the, the sideboards. Uh, here you'll see the um, uh, jackknife where Holmes would a knife is correspondence to the mantle, um, as well as uh, the Persian slipper where he would leave his uh, tobacco in. Uh, those are all touches directly out of the original canon. So clearly, this is a team put together that has a, a very strong um, love for the original canon, uh, the original materials. Uh, how authentic it's going to be, we'll see going in. But so far, it's actually uh, pretty good. Um, uh, and also as a note, I, uh, I mentioned his sound earlier, but actually after that intro, there really isn't, there's a couple sound effects and a little bit of music, but ultimately there's no more voiceover. Um, so I will read the rest of the dialogue. I am not going to be doing British accents because I respect my friends in the UK too much to subject them to the, the accent they do have. Uh, so first thing let's do, let's uh, talk to Dr. Watson. Um, as you see, we also have um, options we can go through, dialogue trees. Um, uh, uh, have you decided to wear your bowler hat for this investigation, Watson? I'll choose that one. Uh, have you decided to wear your bowler hat for this investigation, Watson? As always, Holmes, I feel positively undressed without it. Oh, it looks like clicking does move to the next lens. That will save me from pauses. Uh, and the other option for Dr. Watson was, have you already begun your journal entries, Doctor? Of course, Holmes. Any case in which you take an interest will certainly interest the world. And also your paycheck, because Watson definitely made money off of these. Okay. Um, the other thing that was nice about this is uh, it does have a journal, um, something that a lot of mysteries at the time did not have built-in journals. So this actually is going to be very helpful to us, especially as I pick it up and play it down. Um, so we have here uh, at Baker Street, though he was loath to show it, I do believe Holmes was truly gratified by Inspector Lestrade's notes and the request for his assistant, which it contained. I'm sure I can't recall seeing him more than excited at the onset of an investigation. He knows that Scotland Yard only calls for him on his most challenging cases. Holmes asked me, have you decided to wear the bowl hat? And then it just repeats the conversation we had, actually. So that's good. So it keeps, actually keeps track of the conversations that we have. Um, I believe this tracks clue information as well, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so let us head out, and while we're heading out, um, 
uh, Elsa Zion asked, uh, Lucy, Watson not being Lucy Liu is weird to me now? Yes. <laughs> um, Lucy Liu is definitely a really good uh, Watson, and, and she's well, frankly one of the best. Come along, Watson. The game's afoot. White because it's White So Holmes. And then uh, Jay was asking, how do you feel about Deerstalker? Um, I'm up and down about it. I mean, no, the Deerstalker doesn't have any basis in canon, but the original material, uh, the original illustration of Sherlock Holmes, one of them in Hounds of Basketball, did have the Deerstalker. It's become iconic for him, so I'm meh about it. Um, certainly, you can't really tell whether he's got that, but I mean, he's wearing the Inverness coat, and, the, and something that's probably the Deerstalker. For a game, especially a, the first visual game that Sherlock Holmes had uh, in this style, um, making sure the audience immediately recognizes Sherlock Holmes makes sense. It's sort of the blockier textures, so I can understand why they went with that one. Um, uh, yes, uh, uh, Yodan is definitely, this is, uh, the idea of the journal being built in was actually really bright and innovative for the 90s. Uh, so we have uh, Wiggins here. Let's talk to Wiggins real quick. Take a forever to walk across. Uh, let's start with number one. Are the rest of your lads available, Wiggins? They're at the ready, sir. Tell me what you need, and I'll pass it on. There's eight who are willing to do the work, so it'll cost eight bob a day plus the usual reward. So apparently we're going to have to pay this kid money. What's well, good to know? I'll be requiring your assistance, Wiggins. At your service, Mr. Holmes. You have a job for the regulars? Uh, I, I actually don't. Um, but now I know. Well, no, Wiggins. Not just at the moment. Very good, sir. Let me know when there's anything we can do for you. We use all the brass. We can only use the brass. So, cash. Um, so something else, uh, if you're not familiar with this style, uh, it is prone to what this game, uh, or what the genre is known as pixel hunting. Um, so sometimes you have to kind of mouse over things and look at the same time down here to see what they show up as. Uh, so you notice he's carrying a gyroscope, and that's just really this set of five pixels right here in his hands. Um, an exact though inexpensive replica of Maxwell's dynamic spinning top. Its condition states clearly that it is a well-loved and bunch-used toy. Um, we also have uh, Jonas, the newsstand operator. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just get to the crime scene. Uh, my own inclination is to click on absolutely everything before I go there, but... Let's, 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 let's do the thing that we're here to do. Jump that ahead. Uh, so um, we have the map here of London. You'll see it just scrolls pretty well. So this is, um, particularly if you're familiar with the board game um, Consulting Detective, this is going to look very familiar. This is a very specific view of London. Um, it's also, specifically speaking, a, a pre-World War II map of London. Um, but, the, but specifically how far this map goes out and what it covers is almost identical to the map you get in the Consulting Detective board game. So again, another touch that makes me think that this team really do know their lot about uh, Sherlockians. Um, when our team wants to go to the pub, at last, the pub is not unlocked for us yet, so we'll instead be going to the alley behind the Regency Theater. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, good of you to come so quickly. After you've been thoroughly examined the scene and the corpus delicti, please share your observations with me. Translation, look at the body first before you talk to Lestrade. Great. Um, and something else uh, about this era of games is um, some of the puzzles are definitely really, really hard. Uh, that was definitely designed to kind of give people reasons to keep playing them and keep enjoying them. Um, but also, not a lot of people understood how to play these kind of visual games yet, so there's going to be some weird, heavy, handholdy kind of commentary you'll see occasionally comes on. Um, so let us start... Ooh, there's a better piece here. But let's start with the corpse. That's what we're asked to do. A woman, approximately 25 years old, has had her jugular vein viciously slashed. Ew. There was certainly the that was certainly the cause of death. Uh, there are several non-fatal gashes in her abdomen, abrasions on the back of her neck, and scratches on her left ring finger. The distinct odor of peculiar cloying and inexpensive brand of perfume pervades the body. So, um, we know from that, uh, she was killed by a slash across the throat. Um, her ring, a ring, a ring was removed from her finger, and it was on a ring finger. It was probably a wedding ring. Um, and she wore cheap a perfume, which means that she was probably not uh, a, a woman with means. Um, I'm going to grab this battered piece of paper here. It appears to be a common theater play doll. Okay. Uh, can we? Uh, I had to see again. We'll have to get this habit. Pick up a piece of paper. We now have it. Um, there's a handbag. Let's look at the handbag. 
Uh, Yuda is asking about uh, cloying. Uh, cloying means uh, sticky hangs around a lot. Yes, uh, Jay, Jay mentions. Um, anyway, the handbag. It is a simple silk line handbag, sometimes called a reticule. Uh, the contents, a pocket mirror, a tin of facial powder, a large metal key, a kerchief, and some kachos uh, has been dumped out and apparently subjected to a hasty search. C-A-C-H-O-U-S. I actually do not know what that is. Um, I will quickly Wikipedia that. Uh... It is a uh, something used to sweeten the breath. It's a lozenge, so it is a kind of a, a, a breath a breath mint, if you will. Um, okay, uh, so basically, uh, looks like Scotland Yard have already dumped this out. Can we pick up the handbag? Please examine anything you like, but she'll need the handbag and its contents for evidence. So Lestrade noticed the handbag, but not the handbill. Okay, uh, there are also cigarette butts over here. Between one, behind one corner of the crate are a half dozen cigarette ends recently crushed into the dirt. The brand is common and smoked by thousands of Londoners. The smoker was a man wearing heavy boots or work boots, heavy shoes or work boots. Given the length of the butts, his fingers were most likely stained by nicotine. So a person was crouching there, um, probably a, a smoker. Um, uh, and uh, looks like they were there for a while and probably had nicotine stained, nicotine stained fingers. So that is good to know. Um, can I pick up the cigarette butts? I'm just gonna pick up everything I've asked but can. I did, okay. Um, let's see, is there anything else here we can look at? Let's look at the barrels. This is a storage area for damaged or discarded stage props from this season's plays. These items are waiting for the dustmen. The entire area appears undisturbed. Uh, can we open the barrels? No. Okay, just gives the same thing. Um, let's see. No other re Can we move the barrels? Okay, it's cannot be moved. Okay. Um, one thing I want to note, uh, 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 Jay mentions about modern remakes. Um, uh, something to kind of think about is that in a modern one, usually these words would appear by the context-sensitive cursor. Uh, so um, you don't have to keep looking down and back up. Uh, but also the other thing is that I don't know how much of a, a failure that is necessarily because we also have a lot less screen area here. I mean, this area is not going to be searchable for our crime scene, and we can't really scroll. So the fact that these, these words actually a uh, third of the way up, so it's not that far from anywhere you would look at the cursor, so it's not too bad. But that being said, you notice that none of the hot spots are at this top half of the screen. Most of them are really down here. So anyway, your eye is going to be drawn from that middle part of the screen down to easily see, oh, hey, a word lit up, so I can see what that is. So um, while it's not uh, the modern interpretation of it, it's clearly they are thinking about making sure that people are able to see that mouse over area. Uh, so as I was moving around, I noticed the iron bar. So let's look at the iron bar. This is a two-foot section of iron pipe. Both ends are corroded by rust. There's a trace of red paint on one end. Um, can we pick up the iron bar or we'll struggle with this? There we go. So <laughs> everything but that handbag. All right, let's look at that. A lady's very stylish hat fashioned in a fine crimson silk. Pick up the hat. Okay, so Lestrade noticed the hat too, so he's not that dim. But still. Um, okay, so uh, notice we have the inventory here. This is our inventory. Um, so we can look at these things more. Um, we have the original message we got requesting help. Um, we got a number of business cards, and then, of course, our playbill. Let's actually see if we can look at the playbill anymore. Uh, the playbill is dated for two nights ago. On the back of the message, which appears to have been written, have been hastily scrawled, S, meet me outside the stage door after the show. I have important news, B. So, it's like someone was lured out here. Uh, can we... Oh, let's get to show us that again. Okay, so we have to... Oh, okay, I see. So, if you click on it... Ah, because I have look highlighted. I see now I can actually see that more clearly. Okay, well, we've already looked at those. There's no new information on the cigarette butts or the iron bar, so we will exit. 
I think we've gotten everything out right here. Um, she points out this is uh, definitely a case of Carmen San Diego's hat. Yes, that is that's clearly Carmen San Diego's hat. She was here. She murdered someone and stole something. We don't know. Anyway, case all for done. Let's move on. Uh, no, it's actually talk to Lestrade. Choose one. What can you tell me that isn't obvious from the scene, Inspector? Lestrade says the deceased was an actress here at the theater named of Sarah Carraway. She lived by herself out in Bayswater. According to our only witness, there is a sister, whereabouts presently unknown. The witness found the body, but remembers nothing of the person she saw fleeing the scene. You may speak to her if you like, though she's incoherent. She's in the victim's dressing room, the, through that door and up the stairs. But before you go to her, I'd like you to confirm some theories of my own. After you've thoroughly examined the body, of course. I think you'll find the number and character of the wounds tell the whole story. Hmm. Okay. So is it? Ah, okay. So it seems that there's more here. Again, red pixel hunting. Um, if you look, there's one point here. It says knife wounds. Just one little spot. Otherwise, it says corpse. I completely. And then there's abrasions. Actually, to be fair, those may have appeared after I originally looked at the corpse. Um, but again, in a modern design, this probably would have all come all at once, um, or at least in some way to indicate you have new information. Uh, that's not happening here, so we have to be a little more diligent. And again, let's try kind of play. Said, "Hey, go check out the body again." Um, so they allow us to kind of see. Oh, hey, this is this is what's up. Um, yeah, or Jace points out a close up of the body. That's another common modern interpretation. So let's try the abrasions. Walk all the way around there. The abrasions on her neck imply that her attacker forcefully removed some sort of heavy chain or necklace. There are three separate lines where a chain scraped her neck, all of which are deep and livid. So a ring and a necklace seem to have both been taken. And the knife wounds? The wounds were clearly made by a short blade, perhaps the size and shape of a scalpel. Close observation reveals that the blade was serrated. There is a trace of a white powdery residue of unknown nature on the victim's coat immediately besides what appears to be the first of the abominable wounds. Um, as a note, um, I showed you before that the, the, the official title of this game is The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, there was a sequel on um, which I mentioned in the chat uh, called um, The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, a name of the uh, the rose, uh, something rose, uh, blanking already, already. Um, a rose tattoo, um, the case of the rose tattoo. But so retroactively, uh, this game is now known as The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes, the case of the serrated scalpel, which is why I had that reference there. So now that we've actually looked at the scene, uh, let's up to the barrels, make sure there's not anything else lurking here. No. All right, so we may have gotten everything now. So now we're going to walk all the way back over to Lestrade. Have you decided on an explanation for the crime, Inspector? Lestrade says, There is no doubt that this is the Ripper's awful work. The fact that we are miles away from his habitual haunts in Whitechapel are of absolutely no significance. Uh huh. This gruesome business has a signature written all over it. Um, so we have a couple options here. Uh, you can't scroll. I mean, I'm already like, kind of scrolling. Um, uh, so, uh, down up here, we have, uh, one is I'm afraid I can't give us the pleasure of agreeing with you. Um, and, and Watson will concur with your theory. Two is you seem very sure of your facts, uh, believes evidence contradicts your interpretation. Um, and three, I'm reluctant to speculate about such a serious crime for all the facts in my possession. Um, let's exit for a moment, uh, because Jay asked if we can collect a sample of the powder. Let's try that. Um... Is there a way we could do that? So let's try exit. Um, is there anything we can use to collect the powder? Iron bars? Not really. Um, white powder residue. Right. Okay. There we go. Uh, the substance was probably on the murder weapon at the time of the attack. A thorough chemical analysis mostly reveals composition, i.e. We need to go back to 221B Baker Street. Um, this is actually a really common thing in most Sherlock Holmes video games. There's going to be some form of, you have to do science. Uh, um, the science is slides from actual chemical analysis to eh, stuff. Um, but it's almost always done in 221B. So for some reason, Holmes has a, a perfect laboratory that always does every science need every time. 
Um, there's one game I recall, I don't remember off the top of my head, where you're in a morgue and it says, I should do a test. And then you go back to doing Baker Street. He's like, but you're in a morgue. It's right, that stuff's right there. Um, so uh, uh, it's really common that you will go back and forth to do 2 b a lot during the course of these games. Um, so let's check uh, the, uh, you don't have to check the box. Um, looks like there's nothing clickable here. Um, uh, so let's try to start again. Um, I think, uh, I think I know what's going on here. Um, I know a lot about the actual Holmes murders, murders, so I'm not sure if the game's going to recognize my own knowledge here. This is one of the downsides of setting uh, a Sherlock Holmes game into either existing canon or known history is that sometimes the players could be smarter than the game and the game design has to assume that the person playing it has none of this background, but it doesn't necessarily reward if you do have some of this background. Um, but yes, Jay, she has all of her organs, so that would be my first thought. So let's see if I can convince the shot. I'm afraid I cannot give myself this pleasure of agreeing with you, Inspector, and being a man of scientific temperament, I doubt whether Dr. Watson will concur with your theory. Without hearing results of the medical examiner's investigation, I will not even presume to have a theory. Damn it. Quite right, Doctor. Mr. Holmes and I perhaps overstep ourselves, though I am certain that the official inquest will prove me correct. Okay, well then let's see. We got much yes, Marsh Lestrade. Um, you seem very sure of your facts, Lestrade, but I believe that there is evidence that contradicts your interpretation. Lestrade, I assure you that I have examined everything with great detail, Mr. Holmes. I seriously doubt that I have missed any significant clue. What have you seen that goes against my theory? Um, ah, so now we have some options, and I presume, based on how this is probably designs, that um, these options are not available unless I find certain objects. That's pretty common in uh, mystery game design. Uh, so I'll start with the missing jewelry, which we already noted. I suspect you know that the victim's jewelry is missing. Would you make of that? I presume you're referring to the abrasions on her neck and hands. As you well know, the Ripper takes selected items of jewelry from his victims. Eh, it's not entirely true, but whatever. We'll move on. This further supports my case, Holmes. I believe that if my theory were flawed, you would be the man who set me straight. But it looks like you have nothing material to add. Oh, fuck you, Lister. Um, all right. Uh, the killer's choice of weapon is most telling, don't you think? Indeed. My professional line tells me this woman was killed by a surgeon's scalpel. <laughs> Scalpels are not serrated, dude. And we know that the Ripper uses a scalpel with the skill of a medical man. Isn't that so, Dr. Watson? From what I have what I have read, Inspector, the answer is yes. But I would not presume to commit myself before the autopsy is completed. I must say that if the scalpel is used, it was a dull one. The wounds appear to be a bit ragged. Thank you, Watson. Well, that's as may be. I'm certain that the medical examiner will confirm my observation that a surgeon's scalpel was the instrument of death. Mr. Holmes, do you have any credible reason to believe that the weapon was not a scalpel? Um... And it actually, and again, this is a slight bad design. Um, if you end a statement on a question and then give the player options, your immediate instinct is that those responses should answer that question. But that's not. We've actually gone back to the original tree we had before. Um, so slightly off design there. Um, the absence of a perfume bottle in her purse is a vital clue. Wouldn't you agree, Inspector? A large bottle of the scent she was wearing sits in the vanity in a victim's dressing room. Powerful smell, isn't it? But the absence of the bottle is no mystery. Uh, okay. Um, if you look closely at the victim's coat and at the wounds, you may notice that the fatal plate has a serrated edge. Dr. Watson, can one find a serrated scalpel in a physician's black bag? I regret, Inspector, that I know of no such instrument in the hands of any medical man. Hmm. That is unusual, but I suspect that is insignificant. I never said the Ripper was a doctor. You did, actually, but whatever. Uh, perhaps his other scalpel lost its razor edge. He's done enough foul work with it, heaven knows. Let's not confuse the investigation with triviality, Shinlin. Perhaps the murderer was imitating the style of Jack the Ripper. The gutter press has been filled with lurid accounts of the fiend's disgusting exploits. Perhaps we we'll feed the bulldog, Doctor. I need facts. Mr. Holmes, my hypothesis is that the Ripper is responsible for this brutal murder. Perhaps there is a bit of confusion surrounding the serrated blade. I will concentrate my efforts on the question of the murder weapon. But I will not be adverse to you and Dr. Watson looking further in this entire matter if you wish. You may speak with the witnesses in the victim's dressing room, and you may want to make examination of the victim's flat at 21 Parade Street. Fun fact! Um, 21 Parade Street is actually the address for a Holmes... Uh, knockoff, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, there was a character named, and I'm double-checking my book up on this. Um, da, 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 uh, oh, no, I've lost it. Um, 
One sec. Checking my library. Um, my home's library is right behind me. Um, the Adventures of Solar Ponds by August Derleth. Um, these were a bunch of stories that were written in the 20s, um, uh, 20s and on. Uh, this particular version is actually copyright 1945, but uh, the first one was written in 1929, um, or sorry, 28. Uh, and August started reading from there on. And Solar Ponds was very clearly a Holmes knockoff, and his address is 21 Parade Street. So not only are the creators of this game Sherlock fans, they also understand some of the side corners of Sherlockian lore, which is interesting to me. Um, but aside from all of that, we do have actually all the... We probably unlocked another hotspot. Um, let us make sure there wasn't anything more that Lestrade has to say. Do we have to say Lestrade? Okay, um, I have a sound off, so I'm thinking there's a noise going on. Oh, wait, no, there it is. Is there anything more you could tell me, Inspector? I have said all that I have to say. I can only hope that my inquiries into the source of the murder weapon reveal some new link that will lead me to this foul criminal will help me send him to the gallows. I hope you have something that I have overlooked, though I suspect the chance is remote. It appears I have a little chance saved to report to the Yard that Jack the Ripper is no longer satisfied with hunting in Whitechapel. A citywide alert must be posted. Um... Uh, uh, so, um, another about Lestrade, uh, real quick, is, um, he is traditionally, first of all, he is the traditional foil to Sherlock Holmes in Scotland Yard. He actually doesn't appear in that many stories. Um, he appears slightly more often than some of the other police officers, but he's not ubiquitous as he's in most Sherlock fiction. The other thing is that Lestrade is not actually dumb. Um, in, in the original canon, he's actually positioned much more as um, someone who doesn't understand Holmes' techniques but tries, uh, and also slightly hamstrung by the, frankly, sometimes if constantly evolving police procedures of the day. Um, in fact, Holmes in one story actually calls Lestrade, quote, the best pick of a bad lot, unquote. So there is respect both directions between Holmes and Lestrade. Not every version puts that up. That being said, Lestrade is ultimately a police investigator, and he's going to look for the simple solution. Um, so I make, I'm, I'm joking a bit about Lestrade here about, you know, and, and saying, well, he's just said this. I mean, there's some of that there. But the reality is, from Lestrade's perspective, this isn't a bad assumption to make. Uh, this previous known serial killer is acting in much the same way in this new spot. We need to warn people that the Jack the Ripper might be outside of Whitechapel. His instincts are strong here. We, as the players know that Lestrade is wrong because Lestrade's role in Sherlock Holmes is to be wrong. So narratively understand Lestrade is wrong. But one of the side effects of that is if you actually think about Lestrade's perspective here, he's actually not got a bad instinct here. Um, oh, Zion, uh, I'm glad you're liking this. Yes, I, my, my goal with this was definitely to make this an actual play, a discussion of Holmes canon and discussion game design. I, I want to do a lot with this because it's all topics I can talk about. Um, because otherwise just watching someone click on things and read text can get boring. Um, uh, and also, you also mentioned, um, one of the issues you have with modern Holmes works is the fact that gathering scientific, the fact gathering scientific knowledge was novel in the Victorian era, but modern police work follows that by default. And that is true. Um, another reason why the, uh, Lestrade, Lestrade is an idiot canard gets a little weird in modern context is because this is just things that weren't done. Um, Holmes was really not only uh, and sadly brilliant, but also creating an entire new science that didn't exist, both fictionally or in the real world. And in fact, uh, modern criminal investigation followed to a certain degree some of what Conan Doyle laid down. Um, and he inspired people to start creating the very things that Holmes referenced in stories. Uh, so in a weird sort of way, Sherlock Holmes helped to create modern science of deduction. So while in the fiction he did that, in the real world to a certain degree he's done that as well. Um, uh, so, um, now that we've gone through all that, I'm going to double check the journal uh, and it looks like we're going to... Okay, so a nice thing, nice touch. Uh, this is actually the same page I landed last time, so it didn't start back at the beginning. And there is a search function here, which is interesting. I'm curious. Uh, I want to try powder. Text that down. Okay. Um, let's try scalpel. 
And we'll actually highlight scalpel. That is a feature I did not expect to find. So that is really interesting. Especially for a game that's 28 years old. It has searchable text. That's fascinating to me. Um, it's probably all hard-coded, which means that probably very specific words are programmed to find very specific instances of words. Probably not actually a dynamic search. Um, but still, the fact that this is something this game design has put in is really, really interesting. Um, uh, but anyway, so this goes through all the stuff here. Um, it's it's just a transcript of everything, so I can't actually. I have, the, the downside is that we do have to use search. Like, okay, like for example, um, we mentioned the sister. So if I want to find that, actually not in here. Probably because sister was not one of the program search boards. So it's it is still somewhat limited, but it's not completely limited. Um, let me talk to the console real quick before I go inside because we want to go search the rest of this area first. Is everything here exactly as you found it? Nothing's been moved since I arrived, Mr. Holmes. I rang up the inspector and he was most particular in his instructions. Touch nothing, he says, so I'm standing here like a lump. Again, going back to your original point, constables weren't used to these kind of instructions. This is still relatively new and this is early in Holmes's career. Um, so the constable was rightfully like, why would I not touch things? Okay, I guess I won't. Do you have any information that would assist our investigation, Constable? No, Mr. Holmes, I'm sorry, but with fending off the newspaper gents and half the nosy buggers in London, I've been preoccupied, as you might say. That's wholly fair. Let's see if we can go inside. One thing also is, is a lot of these older I'm oh, sorry. Harry Carruthers, you must be Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. I'm Harry Carruthers, a stage manager. Inspector Lestrade told me you might want to look, for the, look about the place. Feel free, I'm afraid we can't do, be of much help. Poor Sarah. Is it the girl who witnessed the incident? Yes, her name is Sheila Parker. She was in a dreadful state earlier, fainted dead away. And as you can see, she's still very upset. I doubt she'll be able to answer any of your questions just yet. That's interesting to know. Um, again, what I was saying earlier is that uh, one of the things, again, nice touches I like about this, in older uh, um, Sierra game, or sorry, scum-based games, these kind of verbs on the screen games uh walk was actually a verb you had to use so if when you go somewhere say open door walk through door um luckily this assumes open and walk for to transition scenes again it's a small touch we take for granted in our modern games it actually would have been relatively new at the time this came out um so okay so let's do our usual peer on the screen again you notice none of the hot spots are really happening at the top here um a nice little little touch uh so chest of drawers let's look at that The chest is closed and locked. There are scratches in the wood around the lock, deep enough to suggest that it had been forced open more than once. So someone broke into this more than once. Let's try open. It is locked. We do, however, we don't have the key. Now the key is, yes, the key is still with in the purse. So we'll have to come back to that. Flowers, look at those. These are pink carnations with dark red veins in the petals. This startling but common effect is probably achieved by standing the flowers in some kind of dye or staining fluid. An analysis of one of these blooms might prove useful. Cool, let's do that. Let us take a flower. I'm sorry, I have talk. Uh -huh. Let's pick up flower. I see there's a handwritten card there. Let me do that. Um, so next, again, very small, like nine pistols here, handwritten card. The note reads, Dear Sarah, what's in name? A rose by the name would smell as sweet, a secret admirer. This misquote, <laughs> not the quote, misquote, uh, from Romeo and Juliet is strangely the product of a feminine right hand with the unusual habit of dotting eyes with tiny hearts. Um, uh, Jay points out correctly, um, yeah, the, the reason why they have probably pick up supposed to talk is to avoid that. Also, something you can't really see um, is that you can also type the first letter of the verb uh, to activate it, something I'm doing occasionally here to kind of speed things along. So now I can push P here, I'm actually just pick up, and then I can take the card, which I've done. Um, let's see, okay, clear that. Uh, wardrobe, open that. Uh, is there anything inside here? Okay, something else is you have, you have to wait for the text to clear on the screen, it's a little annoying. So before I can start going back to hot switching. I'm not seeing anything in the wardrobe, but there is a spring down here. Let's look at that. There's a steel spring attached to a small square mass of solid brass. That's interesting. Let's, oops, let's pick that up. 
And let's look at that in our inventory. Actually, let's look at this while we're here. Pink carnation with dark veins in the petals, nothing useful there. Um, oh, okay, another thing is that, I see, this is, go to the end, that's one over. Uh, handwritten card, anything useful there. That's the same information we had before, and the spring. Let's look at that. Okay. Um, as it looks like a doorstop, maybe? It's probably a doorstop. Uh, well, anyway, let's exit. Uh, dressing screen, let's look at that. A well-traveled but unexpectedly lovely oriental silk dressing screen. Demands of modesty forbid an explanation as to what goes on behind the screen, but suffice to say there's nothing worthy of note there now. Okay, uh, there's Herrick Brothers. Uh, there's a stain here. Uh, the stain is the look and smell of uh, Makassar hair oil. There's a splatting around the stain indicative of a mild impact. A single black hair two inches long is caught in the oil. Please don't tell me I have to try to find the pixel of the hair. Let me try to just pick up stain, see if that works. I think I'm just there. No, I want the hair. Okay. Um, mouse it real quick. No, okay. I think it's something else we'll have to do to unlock that. Uh, there's our perfume bottle. The perfume is entitled Eau de Sam. Uh, I have probably screwed that up. The label lists the address of the perfumers as Bell's Perfumier in Westminster. There's a ribbon around the bottle as if it were a gift. Can I take it? I can take it. I can take everything. I will steal everything. It's evidence. I'm sorry, not stealing. No, it's, it's, it's all very important. Very necessary for, for serious detective stuff. Uh, boxboard portraits of several notable London stage actors of the previous generation are glued securely to the wall. Okay. Uh, Look at the mirror and filigree work. The mirror is one solid piece of glass with no removable back. The nooks and crannies of the curved mirror frame, which are poorly painted a dingy yellow to look like gold, reveal nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Um, Sheila Parker. Uh, let's see. Miss Parker, I'm sorry to disturb you. Do you think you could bring yourself to describe what you saw? I saw Sarah lying there. Oh, it was all so horrible. I can't bear to think about it. She seems near hysterical, Holmes, and rightfully so. I doubt we'll get much help in her current condition. Okay. Somebody else mentioned earlier that uh, she needed to calm down. Do we have anything that we can calm her down with? Uh, let me see. Go back to the beginning. What if I... What if I give her one of my cards? No, thank you. Okay. Um, but anyway... Um, it looks like uh, Harry Crothers, uh, someone asked him what, what the guy's doing here. Um, it looks like he's probably trying to fix that lock. So let's go talk to Harry Crothers. What is the problem with that door, Mr. Crothers? Which is to say, what are you doing? The plate is broken. I'm attempting to repair it, but I'm afraid it's quite beyond me. I probably have to hire a locksmith to do the work. That answers your question. Who forced this door? Inspector Lestrade thinks it was the Ripper. He says that the Ripper broke in here and dragged Sarah out into the alley to murder her. Do you think that's what happened, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> um, one of them says, defers to uh, Lestrade, number two. The other one is, kind of talks Lestrade down. Let's go with one. That's very much <clears throat> Holmes's MO. Uh, the inspector has many fine qualities, but he is overly fond of theatrics. It is clear that the murderer did not attack Miss Crothers here in this room. What is your evidence to that, Mr. Holmes? Uh, we have the location of the woman's hat, the flowers on the bureau, the fact that the wardrobe is closed. It's really the location of the hat. The location of the woman's hat. Exactly what I thought, Mr. Holmes. She shouldn't have had her hat unless she was going out the back door. That means the Ripper must have broken in during the performance and then went back outside to wait for her. I can't see anything is missing, though. So we know that someone broke in, did something, left, and then waited for her to come out. Um... Do you know of anyone who might have harbored a grudge towards Miss Carraway, a rival or jilted lover, perhaps an obsessive admirer? Certainly not. I can't imagine why anyone would want to harm her. She wasn't the greatest actress, but she was popular in a way and sweet. Though now that you mention it, there was a young fellow who was asking about her a short time back. He seemed rather suspicious. What was suspicious about him? I found him hanging out in the alleyway. He asked if Sarah worked here. I offered to take a message, but he refused to leave his name or his reason for calling. He was just a lad, no more than 17, but bright-eyed and very single-minded. He didn't want to see Sarah so much as wanted her dress. Did you give it to him? 
What do you take me for, sir? I don't go handing my girls over to any dim one who just happens by, thank you. My refusal didn't seem to bother him at all, though. He just smiled and thanked me for my time, pretty as you please. Then, he said, if I changed my mind, he'd make it worth my while, and that I could leave a message to them at the moon gate, whatever that means. Okay, the moon gate. Have you recalled any details that might assist my investigation? I think I've told you everything I know. Okay. Um, so, oh, let's look at the chair first. Straight back velveteen upholstered chair, probably intended for visitors. It's a bit worn and has seen better days, but the upholstery is not ripped, nor have any of the furnishing tacks appear loose. All right, um, so uh, it looks like we're not going to get anything else out of Sheila Parker. Let's double check, make sure that's true. Okay, so, okay no. Um, something else is uh, um, yellow to indicate this is an option you've not tried before. Gray is an option you have before. Um, again, pretty common in a lot of modern uh, adventure games in general. Um, but this was something that dialogue so important to a Sherlock game. Uh, it probably would have been relatively unusual to see that here. Um, so I don't know if this is the first game to do it, but certainly would have been one of the early games to indicate, oh, this is a technology here, or this is an experience. Um, you don't ask about the carpet. There's nothing here under the carpet. Um, so let us step back outside. The whole the question, okay. Uh, now, now Watson reveals he has a sedative. So Holmes, if you'd like to question her, I have a sedative. So we'll talk to uh, Watson. Um, that actually brings up an interesting point. Uh, the role of Watson in Sherlock Holmes games. Uh, it widely varies. Sometimes he's just following you around and is there because that is what Watson does in the Sherlock Holmes stories. Sometimes he is there to be the person that actually talks to people while Holmes does the investigation, which is not how the stories break down. Um, sometimes he's there to offer medical advice, which, generally speaking, Holmes can also do himself, but it gives Watson uh, narratively and from game time perspective something to do. Um, so some, it's sometimes really unclear what Watson's role is in any game until you start to play it. In this case, luckily, the game told us, hey, by the way, I have something for you. So we can go to now talk to Dr. Watson. This woman uh, stress. This woman's stress appears to be genuine, Watson. As a professional observer, would you say her behavior is that of a person who has suffered a terrible shock? She's certainly within what I would call the credible emotional range for such a person. That is a really scientific way of putting it. The credible emotional range. I believe her response to be authentic, although the woman is an actress, and you yourself, Holmes, have fooled me countless times with your own sham performances, which is a valid point. Uh, what does the room tell you of the victim? So you can actually ask a lot of stuff from Watson here. What does the room tell you of the victim? The portraits of actors from the past suggest that she was comfortable and happy in her profession. Judging by the flowers and perfume, I'd say that she was more liked than despised. So Watson is apparently also going to act the role in this game of a person who can articulate and help guide you on some of the clues, um, which is a, a not unusual role for Watson in the games, but I haven't seen it in a while, so it's interesting to see it here. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised by it. Watson, have you espied the new detail? Has blinding revelation struck your brain? I regret to admit, Holmes, that I am more confused now than when we arrived. Okay, Th thanks for that. Uh, let's talk to Watson again. Uh, Watson, do you have anything that might calm Miss Parker? We might as well have the benefit of her testimony, meager though Lestrade claims it might be. Yes, Holmes, I'm carrying a potent sedative. A small dose should do the trick. Here it is. Blue. It's it's laudum. Who knows? Thank you, sir. I feel better, but much like it, but much like I'm swimming underwater. Yeah, probably logged them. Uh, I think I can answer your questions now if my tongue will obey my brain. Miss Parker, do you now think you might be able to tell us what you saw of this terrible murder? I saw Sarah lying there dead. Blood was everywhere, but especially by her head. I could see her, her insides. A man in a cloak was running off in the street, but I didn't get no good look at him. I didn't see no more than that, sir, honest. I just, I just ran in here and fainted, I guess. Next thing I know, Miss Carruthers is waving his coat in my face. Before I go on, um, Jay mentioned earlier that he thought that some of this might be uh, censorship uh, to, uh, to appeal younger audiences. We didn't see any internal organs in, in the, the, the corpse. Um, and I was inclined to agree at the time, but now we have a testimony saying that she could see her insides. Um, so now we run into an interesting 
point of, of, of contention, as it were. Um, the Victorian stories originally were a little kind of uh, shy on details as opposed to modern uh, mystery drama um, because of the Victorian sensibilities. But they were still more explicit when they needed to be or was a key clue to the case. Um, for example, there was a story, uh, the, the Adventure of the Cardboard Box, which is actually banned in America for a number of years because the key point was um, the client received a box of salt with two separate ears in it. Um, which was considered to be too risque for American audiences, and so they refused to publish the book. It actually appears in uh, the casebook of Sherlock Holmes, which was one of the last anthologies, um, because it's only at the time it had been published, but it was actually chronologically published much or much earlier because it was, it was actually um, blocked in America. Um, so all Holmes media, until a certain point, have this problem of you have to authentically show the crime scene, but also, especially in game, you have to make sure the player has the information. So this is a small piece that, if we hadn't been thinking about it, would have been kind of glossed over because the nothing in the original examination of the corpse mentioned her, her organs were out there. That would seem to be a more important thing than abrasions to look at. Um, and the actual video doesn't show any kind of, of organs or, or even blood on the ground. Um, so how much of this is actual clue, i.e. there's no blood outside and that's an important clue, how much of this is censorship of the media because it's the early 90s and there's a lot of concern about that kind of visibility. Uh, so it's uh, it's an interesting counterpoint. Um, uh, hey, Ned, nice to see you. Uh, glad you sit around too. But yeah, I'll try to get this on uh, video on demand. I believe it'll be up 14 days. I'm also recording this, so hopefully I can get this up on YouTube as well. Um, so this will be around if you guys didn't catch this during the live stream. Um, so let's go back to questioning uh, the woman. Do you know any of her friends or relatives? No, sir, not personally. I didn't even know Sarah very well. But about a week ago, Sarah got this pendant. Big, ugly thing it was, too. She was from her sister. I believe her name was Anna or Hannah, but I don't know where she lives. Okay, now we know what happened to the pendant and also a connection to the sister, which we're going to go talk to. Do you know the secret admirer, the person who gave her these flowers? No, and neither did Sarah. She never was one to appreciate gifts from strangers, but she so liked these that she decided to keep them. Just tonight she told me I, should, I could throw them out if I had mine to. Now the inspector's told me to touch nothing until he completes his investigation. How am I supposed to get dressed? Um, so she had the flowers, and then she's going to throw them out, which makes me think that's probably the cards more important to the victim than the flowers. Uh, let's see if she has anything more to say. This perfume was a gift, wasn't it? Do you know who gave it to her? She said it was from her special friends, but I know nothing about him. He called for, for her here from time to time, but she was very secretive, always making sure everyone was away before she brought him up. As far as I know, he's the only man to see the inside of this room other than Mr. Carruthers. I have no idea why she didn't want to show him off. Okay. Um, Jay points out that uh, Gabriel Knight uh, came out a couple years earlier than this, and it was actually much more graphic. And, and that's true, but also, if I remember correctly, Gabriel Knight was specifically positioned as an adult game. Um, it wasn't, like, labeled as such, but it was certainly sold as a sick graphic horror story. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is generally seen as a more kind of all-ages media, so I think it's maybe why some of this happens. Um, and maybe at some point in time, I'll actually play uh, Gabriel Knight to compare and contrast, because I have both the original and the uh, 20th anniversary edition. Because I am a fan of things that are 20th anniversary editions, as many of you know. Uh, back to Sheila. I found this playbill in the alleyway. Does this note written on the back mean anything to you? Let me see it. Okay. Oh, good. I'm going to give it to her. Great. Uh, I wondered where that had got to. My fiancé came in all the way from Golders Green at night. He couldn't wait to tell me he had found a flat for us. We're to be married early in the new year. I'll be leaving the theater, and none too soon by the looks of it. Oh, so the playbill, red herring. Another interesting point of design. Um... Uh, some of the games, especially some later games I'll play, basically everything you find is a clue, is relevant. You have to put it together in maybe different ways, but everything is relevant. And ultimately, you can't progress until you find all the clues. Uh, this is definitely a game in the older style. Um, it did have some gating, i.e. we can't leave until we talk to Sheila. Um, so the whole her it, being too overcome to talk was a game design gate to make sure that we don't leave until we talk to her. But also, we're going to get clues that aren't actually relevant to the case. Um, so that's good to know, actually, and good to know early on that we can't look at everything and go, okay, how does this fit in? But we have to ask if it fits in. 
Do you know anyone who could be responsible for this brutal attack? I don't know anyone on earth who would do such a thing as what was done to her. Now I know there's monsters in the world for certain, but I can't believe there are friends of mine or Sarah's for that matter. What was your relationship to Miss Carraway? I was her understudy. We were performing the play, The Loves of Hattie Hill, and Sarah was had the lead. I played Beth the servant girl, but I, under, but I was understudy the lead in case, in case, oh, I can't bear to think about it. Can you direct me to anyone who might help me learn more about Miss Carraway? No, sir, I'm sorry. Like I said, I don't know her very well. She was very protective of her personal life. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's check one more time. Yep, that's great option, so we're done there. Um, Jay wants to do a Castle Falkenstein 20th anniversary, 2x the anniversary edition. Like, that would be amazing if we did a, an anniversary edition of Castle Falkenstein. And certainly very appropriate. For those of you who don't know, Castle Falkenstein is a tabletop role playing game made by Art Alcerian Game, which Jay works for. Um, and is a Victorian tabletop role playing game um, and uh, has Sherlock Holmes in it, even. So definitely is. is on point, if you will, for this playthrough. Uh, okay, so I think we've got everything. Let's double check to make sure we haven't unlocked anything to talk to Harry Crothers about. We do. Do you have the key to that chest of drawers? No, my master key only opens the door. Sarah is the only one who had the key in that chest. I think she had a spare, but I don't know where she kept it. Well, I, we know she kept one of them in her purse. Um, so, uh, let's make sure there's no other key little icons here, no. Let's check to see if Watson knows anything more. He does not. Can we leave? I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. The bolt has jammed the lock. And so I can pry it loose to replace the spring mechanism. You won't be able to use that door. <laughs> it's really trying to keep us in here to make sure we've seen everything. All right. So now we know what the spring is, though. So let's find the spring. Give that to Carruthers. I believe this spring will be helpful in repairing the lock. Well, yes, thank you. I believe this is just the piece I need. I'll have this finished in a moment if my fingers don't fail me. Yeah, there's no, there's no animation there, but sure. Okay, he opened the lock. Great. Um, let us talk with Lestrade again. Again, something else um, that is very common with um, particularly older uh, games like this is as you find new information, going back and talking to old uh, uh, suspects or re-examining old evidence is very, very useful. Uh, so we have two options in front of us. We can go, actually, let's walk to the map so I can show you what these options are. So one of them is go talk to the sister, and one of them is to investigate the information. So we can go back to 221B Baker Street, or we can go to Sarah Carraway's flat. Let's make sure. Actually, doesn't her sister... Do we get the address for her sister, or is it her flat? Um, yeah, there it is. Okay. Oh, no, it's the perfumier. We also have the perfumier. Um, so we have three different options ahead of us. Um, let me know what you guys want to do. I'm going to take a quick drink here. One minor point, I do like the fact that Holmes' icon is actually in the location you're at. has a little, uh, uh, little uh, smoke there. Uh, so Jay says the uh, flat. So what is that? A little neat little icon of the carriage running through the streets of London. Again, little touches that are really, really nice and fun for this. Okay, we are at the flat. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, again, I mean... I don't keep bringing this up, but it's really a nice touch, the fact that there are no hot spots in his upper third. It's just aesthetics. Um, that doesn't mean it will always be the case, and I'm always going to check it. Um, but it's, it's getting the note. Um, so we have the barred door to fire escape. We have pictures. Uh, we have an umbrella. We have... Brass caps of the bedpost, which is the most specific room reference I've seen in a while. Uh, the bookshelf. Um, doo -doo -doo. There's a laundry basket. It's a dresser. And okay, so let's kind of just start at the bottom right here. Um, uh, as, as you're doing it, Jay's asking if Holmes actually had a carriage or if he took a cab everywhere. He basically took a cab everywhere. Um, he was uh, middle class and had the means to just pay for cabs constantly. A capricious. Capacious wicker basket of a type manufactured in Singapore and sold in nearly every street market in the metropolis. This one contains a conventional assortment of dirty laundry. Among the sheets, towels, and female undergarments is a man's orange-colored rugby sweater. That's interesting. Uh, can we pick up the sweater? We can pick up the sweater. Okay. Now we can look at the rugby sweater. 
a man's rugby sweater with the colors insignia of the Kensington Rugby Club. The back of the collar is heavily stained with massacre oil, and few black hairs are embedded in the fiber of the wool. So we have a connection between the man who wore this sweater and the door at the backstage. Um, anything else in the rugby basket? Eh, it's the same thing. Uh, can we pick up the rugby sweater? Nope. Okay, so it's just there. So anything else on the rugby sweater? No. Okay, dresser. Dresser. A standard two-drawer dresser filled with cheap cotton underclothes, stockings, and jumpers. Uh, which, for those of us in the United American jumper is also sweater. Which is it's sweater, but jumper. Here, eh, whatever. Um, my guess is that maybe some of this was converted from British English to American English in this release, and some of it wasn't. Uh, anywho, there's a little bump here, which just appears to be just decorative. Um, uh, the teapot. A serviceable, typical China teapot, 100 just like it, or sold every day in whopping. Uh, Elves, as I mentioned, uh, I like rugby, and it's like, I actually, weirdly, uh, I, I've recently become a fan of rugby, too. Um, I started watching um, Irish, uh, specifically uh, uh, Six Nations uh, every year since I lived over in Ireland. I've gotten a taste for the, the Irish team, and so I've been watching Six Nations. That's about all the rugby I watch, but I do watch it once a year for a few matches. Um, uh, oh, and Elf Sion says that a rugby sweater is different from a jumper. Okay, that actually might be the case. Um, then that's good to know. I was unaware there was a difference. That's, that's cool. I learned something. Um, uh, so, yeah, teapot is bog standard. Um, we had the picture here. A cheap reproduction of Gainsbourg's stunning portrait of the Duchess of Devonshire, nicknamed the Stolen Duchess since the daring theft of the original from the Bond Street Gallery in 1876. Okay. Uh, umbrella. This is an old and shapeless classic brawley, which has clearly survived a number of seasons. A blue muslin fabric is faded and is dry despite the wet weather outside. There's a slight bulge in the fabric near the tip. I'm guessing we're going to have to open the umbrella. Ding! And look, there's a key. A key. Amazing, Holmes. Only you could draw good luck from the action that's supposed to yield its opposite. Thank heaven you're not superstitious. Pick up. Brass key, pick up brass key, pick up the brass key. Thank you. Another thing is, is this this pointer is huge, and so sometimes it's hard to click on tiny things. Um, look at the barred door. The crossbar is sturdy and top with enough coal dust to indicate it's not been removed any time recently. Can we open the barred door? This cannot be opens. Hmm. Can we move the barred door? It cannot be moved. Okay. Uh, I'm inclined to assume that that is nothing. Uh, the thing here on the window. Let's go to this brass caps of the posts. A mass-produced brass bed forged as a series of tubes. For aesthetic reasons, the manufacturer has fitted the tops of the tubes with decorative hollow caps. They are convenient, though obvious hidey holes for small objects, and sometimes known as a poor man's bank. Huh. Okay. Pick up brass caps. The thing which is here. Open brass caps. Okay. Yeah, we're done. Got it. A few coppers and a half crown were wedged in the left cap of the head of the bed. It's not possible to say with certainty where these caps ever held anything else. Okay. It looks like that's it for that. Bookshelf. A simple wooden shelf holds a half dozen assorted tuppenny novels and the Holy Bible. The shelf area is messy. Books are open. Spines are one or two idle. Titles are broken. Uh, since Watson seems to be clue giver, let's talk to him again. A rather humble room, Watson. What does this suggest to you? It suggests that acting is not a lucrative profession, Holmes. <laughs> nice. If you wanted to conceal something of value or importance in this room, Watson, where would you put it? If there's anything important in this room, it is beyond my feeble powers to detect. I sense we're going to get that a lot. Do you believe Miss Carlway to have been an indifferent housekeeper? It appears the house cleaning was not one of her strengths. Still, this appears to be more than casual messiness. Excellent, Watson. What do you conclude from the condition of this room? that the police made a dog's breakfast of searching through her effects. Interesting. 
Not necessarily old friends. It is indeed clear that the room has been rather hastily searched. However, there is no indication by whom the search was done. Let's remember that there may be something else investigating, someone else investigating Mrs. Carraway's affairs. Uh, okay. Uh, last one is just, you have anything new and want some going now. Okay, so I think we've got everything. Um, let's go check here what we got. Uh, pop to the ends. Uh, we have the key, right? The brass keys. So we should look at that. And two soft first door locks most likely open something small like a drawer or jewelry box. So let's go back and use that key. Let's see, let's exit first. Open door. Um, let's go back to the alley. And then I see people are talking about uh, Gabriel Knight in the chat. Um, uh, Scotland Yard has been uncharacteristically efficient. Holmes, it appears they have already moved the body to the morgue. Oh, so we have a new change. Um, uh, so this is, uh, the games I think, this is what is commonly referred to as a state change, um, where the same uh, uh, location or item or whatever changes the result of player actions. Um, so what happened was that when we, something we did in the investigation of the flats a state change for uh, this scene. Now, it, the state change may simply be leaving and coming back. Um, might have been a case if we'd gone to any location and come back, this state would have changed. Um, but I suspect it would not have removed Lestrade and the reality information. That may actually have been part of the reason why we had the two different gating puzzles to get out of the backstage area, was to make sure we had absolutely everything. So if we left, we can come back. It could take away uh, the body, Lestrade, and some... Um, the inspector. But because of the state change, there's a chance that other things may have also changed. So let's double check. Look at the web beaten crate. This is a well-traveled but sturdy crate with a detachable cover. The name of the theater stenciled on the cover is almost worn away. Footprints in the dirt nearby indicate someone standing here recently. I think we already looked at that though. Chalk outline. A rough outline of the murder victim drawn in chalk by Scotland Yard for reference of investigation of the murder site. The body itself and any personal effects have presumably been sent to the morgue. Um, interesting point. Uh, um, for those of you who know, uh, my wife actually is, is a physical anthropologist. Um, uh, she went. To, she has a master's degree in physical anthropology, and so it means that as part of that, she had to study uh, crime scene analysis as a result of that. So she's not a CSI person, but she did study some things that are akin to CSI techniques. Um, this whole outline of the body thing is a pretty common Victorian invention, but it really hasn't been used much in the past 50 years because we could take photographs and don't need to have chalk outlines anymore. Um, so this is one of the most iconic images of murder investigations, and yet it's something we haven't done probably in decades. Um, the blood stain does not appear to be itself uh, uh, touchable. Um, uh, uh, Jay's asking, uh, if she ever studied a body farm? Uh, no, but she did actually study at uh, the remains at Spitalfields in London. Um, specific, she's more of a bone remains rather than uh, 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 juicy remains, if you will. Um, so she studied bones more than actual corpses uh, as part of her master's. Uh, specifically, she studied um, the, the, uh, how bones uh, erode and decay, particularly in things like uh, osteoporosis and um, the like. So. Uh, so yeah, it was very helpful for me when I'm writing mysteries. Let me tell you, <laughs> honey, how do you get rid of a body? <laughs> okay. Uh, why? Door is locked. Door is locked. Why is door locked? Use key? Huh. Oh, oh, yeah, I know what this is. All right. Inventory. Iron bar. No, 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 I want to use the iron bar. Can't do that. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. So they locked the door behind them. Well, that's interesting. Or maybe uh, us, us fixing the lock is what actually probably that's the use door. Um, so let's try use door. Use backstage door to theater. Can't do that. Um, talk to the door. See if we can hear some other side. I won't even let that as an option. All right. Well, then we're not going back there yet. Then my plan is uh, not going to work. So instead, let, uh, let's go back to two two one B and test that powder. See if we can get out of that. 
Um, actually, I'm going to talk to Jonas, see if he's heard anything. Come on, talk to Jonas. It's okay. He won't bite. My compliments, Mr. Rigby. The day finds you well, I trust. Indeed, Mr. Holmes. Business has been brisk. The great pu British public devours anything to do with the Ripper. While Jack's at work, my family's eating steak and kidney pud. Well, I'm glad someone's doing well and people get murdered, you bastard. The better London papers, several illustrated weeklies, a handful of the most scurrilous scandal sheets and magazines, and a small selection of chalk confections are available at this stall. Unique among city newsstands, the proprietor keeps unsold daily papers for a week or so before sending them back to Fleet Street. Well, that's interesting. That might be useful here. Um, but I don't have anything I really need to know. Um, Elvis Zion loves the sunglasses. Yeah, I think, I think it's supposed to indicate that uh, he's blind. Um, smoked glasses were a very common indicator of blindness in the Victorian. I don't know how authentic they are, but certainly in movies and fiction, as a common thing that happens. Okay, so now we are back at 221B. Um, lamp book, do, 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 lab table. Let's go to the lab table. This pine topped acid stained table holds a variety of laboratory apparatus ready to perform chemical analysis and experiments. A vast collection of chemicals, test tubes, pipettes, retorts, litmus paper, and glass stoppered bottles are scattered around an oil wick burner and a high powered microscope. A more than slightly noxious odor pervades the whole area. Let's try use lab table. Can't do that. Okay, so I'm guessing we have to use something with the lab table. Uh, did we get something for the powder? Hmm. Or, uh, let's try and use cigarette butts at that table. Can you do that? Okay. Um, try the flour? Okay. Aha! Okay, so now we have, oh no, the dreaded puzzle. Okay, um, a common staple of a lot of Sherlock Holmes games is you're going to do chemical analysis on things. That is a, a very common thing you'll see in most Sherlock Holmes video games. Some of them will walk you through and say, here's what you need to do to try to come up with analysis. This one is just kind of throwing us into the deep end. Um, I don't even know what we're looking for. Like, obviously, the matches are there to light the burner to do the flask. Um, there are various things back here. Um, but I'm not sure what we need to do. So let me check the inventory first. Um, let me look at the flower again. Pink carnation, dark veins, but that's not going to help me. Um, hmm. Uh, would this book have, would this come in the book of the game? It didn't. I double check the book. Um, I'm gonna double check. I'm absolutely sure. Um, here's the the manual. Um, but a lot of this is like installing the game, uh, loading, quitting commands, inventory commands, the journal, uh, setup options. Uh, and then there's the online documentation. Um, let me go ahead and. Uh, switch to the clue book. See if there's anything in here. Um, it's also a chance to kind of look at this. Let me blow this up so you can see it a little better. Um, so this is an interesting thing. Uh, basically, it is uh, a little introduction here to kind of explain how it works. And really, this is broken down by location. Um, so you have uh, the location here, scene description, and then Watson will ask a question, and Holmes will give a response along with an action. It's written kind of like a screenplay. Um, and so what's really happening is like um, Watson going, here's the question I have, which is what the player's question is. And then Holmes giving Watson an answer as a clue to try to help the player along. So um, there's no bookmarks here. I should have thought of that. All right. So 221B. Uh, do we know enough for the flower to put... Look at this. Uh, okay, so. Uh, having attempted to give the flower to what Wiggins and received the flower. So if you have the flower to Wiggins, I would never have thought that. Um, so we have the nature of the dye and this picture flower. I to work with them. So careful analysis reveal. Let's see, Watson. I must scrutinize the flower more thoroughly. 
Um, so we know we have to analyze the power. I knew that, uh, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, that was external and internal. Okay, now I see the problem. Is. Um, okay, uh, as some other things might analyze at your lab table. Holmes, Holmes. Ah, a demonstration is in order. Consider the power I have removed from the victim's coat. Holmes places the power in the lab table. Okay, anyway. Using the Sufield tests, I'll be able to know what sort of powder it is. Holmes uses the test tube and Bunsenberg to analyze the powder. Then there's the matter of the carnation from the dressing room at the Regency. Cursory examination reveals it has been artificially colored. An analysis of substance used to color its petals may lead me to write to the seller and then turn to the buyer. Holmes uses the Microsoft Bunsen burner and flask to analyze the flower, then waits for results. Okay, so let us go back to the game. Um... So let's put the let's try using a flower under the microscope. Let's see a little touch, a little animation there. See the hands. Turning cause of petal discoloration. Do do do. <laughs> At least it gives you a little indication like, hey, this is intended. Okay, so it's not as bad as I thought. The petals artificial died. We knew that. But thank you for reinforcing that. Um, so let's try. Packet of Swan Vesta is a safety match of choice for HM the Queen. Use matches. Oh, good. I don't have to put it in there. It's going to automatically light that up. Okay, so it's going to light up the flask. Um, try use flower on a flask. Okay, it's gonna add nitric acid. More. Okay, good. So this is not as, as bad as I originally thought it was gonna be. Sometimes it's the you have to figure out which chemical goes where. And, and as Jay points out, um, sometimes it's used specifically as kind of a cheap prevention thing. So it's like you don't know which one you have to use. You have to look up a separate physical document so that way people can copy the game as they had the physical document as well. Um, a yellow participate indicates iodine. The dye used must have had an iodine base. That's what we've learned from the flower. Um, so now what? See if we can, see if we can use the flask. No, okay. Is it iodine? Uh, can we? Uh, pick up the flask. Nothing of interest there. Pick up the microscope. Nothing of interest there. All right. Let's try exiting. Back to the lab table. Uh, I, I'm so used to older or newer games, so I keep clicking on things and realizing it's, it's going to give me the default option. Um, so I want to use the lab table. Okay, so I have to simply use an item. So inventory, um, handwritten cards, fume bottle. Where was the powder under? Okay, so the flowers change the flower with iodine stained petals. Um, there's not really much else we can do. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> well, let's see if that's enough. Let's see if we can give Wigan something to do. Time for me to move, Watson. Carry on, Holmes. I'll follow your lead. Uh, of course you are. Let's try giving the flower with iodine-based petals to Wiggins. Oh, a flower, Gov. Ta, very kind, I'm sure. Don't be impertinent, Wiggins. You know it's not a gift. Now remark these dark red lines running through the petals. They were caused by the application of an iodine solution. Find the vendor that sells flowers colored in this manner. You may want to begin your search around the Regency Theater in Oxford Street. The Regency it is, Mr. Holmes. If you're right, it shouldn't take us too long to find a seller. I'll come back here as soon as I have any news. Okay. <clears throat> so we have the flower now, sort of now. That was not as complicated as I thought it was going to be. A little, a little obtuse, uh, but not too bad. Luckily, we have the guidebook to help us out. Uh, okay, so uh, we have some more places to examine, so let's go ahead and get on to that. Uh, 
Um, uh, we now have South Kensington Field, the uh, rugby field. Uh, we've already been to the flats. Uh, and we also have uh, the Southwark Morgue. Oh, right. Um, because we can go examine the body. Mm, you know, I think we should already go through the body first. Let's get that sorted out. And so you guys are chatting about the Infocom games. Yeah, the Infocom games are really good about what they called uh, feelies, um, which were physical objects that came with the game. I mean, oftentimes they're uh, involved clues. Those are really fun. Good day, Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. You'd like to look at the body, I expect. I'll be with you in a moment. Please take a look if you wish. I do wish. Uh, so let's look around here. A tray of pathology tools. A tray of the medical examiner's tools, scalpels, clamps, needles, and sutures. Uh, there's a body of Sarah Carraway. There's another body. There's another body here. Let's look at these. I like the bodies. Okay. That is the body area. This unfortunate young woman bled to death from deep stab wounds inflicted in her throat and upper chest. The fatal blade may have resembled the one reputed to be wielded by Jack the Ripper. Dead body two. And that's another woman with her throat cut. The shallow but lethal incisions across this female victim's throat appear to have been made by a surgeon's scalpel or straight razor. I'm sensing a trend here. Yeah, if it's serrated, this is solved. Um, and, ah, Inspector Gregson. Uh, for those of you who started watching Elementary as a result of my tweet storm, um, you'll notice that the lead detective for the NYPD is Gregson, uh, not Lestrade. And Lestrade is a separate character that we do see later in Elementary. Um, Gregson actually is in the canon specifically. Um, also, he is tied to Lestrade. Um, in fact, they were both rivals. Uh, they would constantly snipe at each other. Um, and so... Uh, there's actually one case, uh, I want to say it was uh, the sign of four, um, where they actually went off and had two different investigation techniques or two different uh, paths of investigation, uh, two different theories of what went on, and both were wrong. But um, they did it primarily because they were rivals to each other. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the spoiler, Elder Zion, uh, the, 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 it's the fact that you see Lestrade later. Um, but the, but it's actually because a lot of people were like, well, why isn't it Lestrade? And as I mentioned before, Lestrade is not as prevalent in the canon as people believe he is. Gregson is number two, I would say, in terms of he shows up in a couple of stories. So the fact that he's here is actually a really nice touch. Um, so let's just talk to Gregson first. 20 seconds second Lestrade. Oh, Here's a sucker. Um, oh, it's you, Holmes. Hello, Inspector. Yes, Holmes, what can I do for you? Well, that was brief. <laughs> okay, so I can do this right, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yes, Jay's referring to Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century, which is an amazing but bad, but amazing but bad cartoon, um, and which Lestrade is the great-granddaughter of the original Lestrade or something along those lines. Um, so, uh, let's talk to the coroner. Has Miss Sarah Carraway's body arrived here yet? Yes, it's right there, Holmes. Yes, I was just filling out some of the paperwork. And may I see the personal items that Inspector Lestrade sent with the body? They're not, that's not standard procedure, Mr. Holmes, but I suppose there'd be no harm in showing them to you. Wait a minute, won't you? I'll retrieve them from the evidence cabinet in my office. So, I'm going to guess that that's a chance for me to kind of look it over. You can seal by sheet, poor Sarah's body is a shambles. Can we do something with her? Can we pick something up? There's a reason why he went off and came back. I don't know what it is. Ta-da! Okay. There's stuff. A small compact of Morley's number eight facial talc with a cotton wool applicator. A large iron key of the type used associated with locks of iron gates or sturdy external doors. Now we need this key to get into the place now. Okay, I see what's happening. A delicate gold chain which is attached to a semi-precious semi violet stone. It appears to be an amethyst and perhaps indicates that the victim was born between January 20th and February 18th. That's an interesting point. Birth stones were very popular in Victorian era. Small detail, neat little touch. A handsome crimson handkerchief made of Japanese silk. Can I pick any of these up? I'm sorry, Tom's I can't allow you to take anything without proper authorization. 
Well, now I think I know where all the straws here for. Or is our Gregson, I should say. Um, nothing else there, so I think we can exit that. I'm sure how we exit that. Oh, okay. I finished the effects now. Thank you. Very good, Mr. Holmes. You may view them again whenever you like. I won't send them over to the yard for a day or so. Uh, Yoden like, mentions, has mentioned a couple times now that uh, descriptions are really, really very Victorian and evocative. And, and I agree. The writing of the descriptions actually is really tonally very, very cool. Um, I'm, I'm really digging those. Um, make sure there's anything else here. Okay, talk to the coroner again. Have you learned anything more of the circumstances surrounding Miss Carraway's death? Not really, Mr. Holmes. I did discover a trace quantity of a curious powdery substance in her coat. It doesn't look like cosmetic powder. My laboratory system won't be until tomorrow, but it hasn't been, so it hasn't been analyzed. Would you like to see a sample of it? Yes. And yes, indeed I would. Very interesting. I wonder if I might have a small quantity to analyze. Of course. Perhaps you would be good enough to report your findings to me. Thank you, doctor. I'm not going to report my findings to you. Um, but do I have the powder now? I do. Okay, cool. Now we know where we got the powder from. Uh, that's one of the downsides of using hint books. So sometimes you inadvertently kind of jump ahead. So I knew they had to do the powder here. Um, but it wasn't a huge surprise. We saw the powder before anyway. So I'm not like it's a massive split or anything. Uh, Gregson. Oh, it's you, Holmes. Inspector, would you authorize the release of some of the items from Sarah Carraway's case? Ooh, hypo. That's actually the first hypo I've seen, which is not bad. The Carraway case? Who's investigating that one, Holmes? Inspector Lestrade was doing some of the preliminary work. Oh, you mean the new Ripper case? Lestrade always gets the glamour assignments. I get what falls off the plate. You're here in simple suicide. Three, I'm here in simple suicide. Three witnesses saw this woman leap off London Bridge a week ago. Clearly a suicide. I'm just trying up the loose ends. Excuse me, Inspector. Concerning those Carraway items? <laughs> Oh, yes, sorry. I'm afraid I won't be able to help you, Mr. Holmes. Only Lestrade can release the evidence. I left him an hour ago at the yard. You might still find him there. I must warn you, though, that security procedure has tightened up some. Tell him I sent you and you should have no trouble. So, um, again, you're seeing the um, a little bit of the rivalry between Gregson and uh, Lestrade there. Uh, we can't look at that. Um, let's look at the powder. The specimen was extracted from the wool of Sarah Carraway's dress. The sample is located at the point where the murderous, murderer first threw the fatal blade. There is not enough of the substance to identify it unequivocally by eye, but it smells distinctively of camphor. An envelope is sufficient to hold a small amount. All right. So next up, we are going to leave here to go to Scotland Yard to talk to Lestrade. Um, Jay looked up the writer for this game. It is... R.J. Berg, he went on to produce McGee's Alice. That explains some of the writing then, um, because McGee's Alice, if you played, is also a really well-written game. Let's go to Scotland Yard. Uh, I like this. An apparently blind vendor. <laughs> it's a subtle touch, but I really love it. Let's go talk to the apparently blind vendor. Hello, Augie. In the pink and so on? Indeed, Mr. Holmes. Love the spot of autumn weather we're having. Okay, so apparently Holmes knows this person. Augie the apple seller has worked to stall for more than a decade. He is a bottomless, though expensive, source of confidential information concerning police business. The constabulary now tolerates his presence because he is not above playing both sides of the street. Many times the police have nabbed their man because of one of Augie's tips. Okay. Well, now we don't. Behind these walls are the headquarters of the Criminal Investigation Department of London's Metropolitan Police, popularly known as Scotland Yard. Here works some, but not all, of the best criminal investigators in the world. <laughs> some, but not all. Because Holmes does not work here. Let's talk to the constable. Good day, constable. I must speak to the inspector Lestrade. Sorry, sir. With all the recent troubles, we've had to restrict access to the building. Authorized personnel only, I'm afraid. But this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the famous consulting detective. That's nothing for me, sir. No exceptions. Please move on. Ah, yes. Inspector Gregson informed us of this recent changes in security procedures, but I assure you, Constable, he has given us permission to enter. That's as may be, sir, but it takes my orders from Chief Inspector Palmer himself, and they are that no one is to pass without proper authorization. You understand, sir. Um, interesting point, historically, is uh, this is not entirely without precedent. The game is not talking about it. It may talk about it later. I don't know yet. Um, but... Uh, around this time period would have been the time that uh, there were 
um, civil war in Ireland, uh, and specifically there were problems with uh, uh, the so-called uh, special branch, uh, which were specifically investigating uh, Irish protesters and Irish terrorist attacks in London. Um, so this would have they actually not been without precedent if they tightened down security around the late 1800s. Um, I don't know if that's as a reference to. It's clearly obviously meant in this design perspective to be a puzzle um, uh, to kind of gate your access to Lestrade. Uh, but the point is, is that there's actually some historical basis for this. Um, and, and Jay asked, this is before the move to New Scotland Yard, and I believe so. I believe this is actually the original Scotland Yard, so before the issue. Uh, no one passed the proper authorization, so we need to get authorization somehow. Watson, help me out here. Does it not seem to you, Watson, that English municipal architecture is one of the most depressing art forms known to man? Judging from this building, Holmes, I would say you have a case. Wow, we're just going to sit here and talk shit about the building. All right. Should we try to raise the straw, Watson? Carry on, Holmes. Yeah, well, we tried that. That didn't happen. Okay. Uh, so let's see if we can go back to Gregson and see if we can sort this out. Still really love that little just animation. Hey, Gregson. You said it would work. It didn't work. What up? Oh, it's you, Holmes. I regret to inform you, Inspector, that your name alone is insufficient for purposes of circumventing the yard security procedures. What? Well, of all the incompetent. Come along, Holmes. Look at the out immediately. Great. <laughs> okay, so. Um, we're. I don't know why we're doing this back and forth. Um, again, some of this. Well, come along, Mr. Holmes. You too, Dr. Watson. I need some papers from the yard anyway. Let's get you in the seal Estrade, and now we'll turn here. Um, uh, some of this was. Uh, this should have taken a home, moment, Holmes. Let me finish this up, and I'll get my thought here. What seems to be the problem here, Constable? No problem, sir. Truth is, it's been pretty quiet. Quiet, eh? If you'd like to keep it that way, Constable, then I suggest you allow Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson to enter immediately. But, sir, my orders are... I'm well aware of your orders, Constable. Allow them entrance on my authority. I assume responsibility for Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Very well, sir. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, you may consider yourself authorized personnel. You may enter whenever you wish. Much applied, Constable, and thank you, Inspector. Let's think nothing of it, Holmes. We live to serve. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some matters to attend to. I'll let him walk off. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, like Jay mentioned, some of this is puzzles for puzzles' sake. Um, some of it also is to kind of artificially inflate game time. Um, uh, something about game design that we, we, we sometimes don't think about is context. Uh, uh, this was the early 90s, um, and so people were generally more inclined to buy a game and play it until they were done playing the game, and then buy another game. Um, it was right around the time of uh, when CD-ROMs became more prevalent, um, when games prices started getting a little cheaper, uh, PC games became the idea that you would you would buy several games and maybe play through them, or maybe buy a game and not necessarily play it all the way through. Um, so usually, if you're buying a game, you're investing in a game, uh, and so sometimes you do have these little things where it's like it makes you feel like you're getting more out of it than you really are. Um, I don't know. My memory of this is fuzzy. Uh, it's been a long time since I played this game originally. Um, I don't remember exactly how I felt about it at the time. Uh, I suspect it was not as helpful as people believed it to be when they were designing them. Uh, but certainly there's a certain amount of, well, let's just add an extra bit in here and it'll be fine. And they'll feel like they've got more bang for their buck. Um, usually difficulty is the more common cr uh, increase of libraries. Everything's really difficult. You spend more time thinking about it, and then you're not necessarily playing the game, but you're thinking about the game, and therefore still getting value out of the game. Um, difficulty as a gateway is, is largely passed on because now there's so many games. You can get them for free. You can get them so, so online. Um, most people who are, are even casual gamers have you know easily dozens of games to play, so they're all fighting for your attention, so they want you to get in as fast as possible. Um, and game times... Have, have they haven't decreased, but they're certainly uh, their moment to moment gameplay is a little more meaningful, I think. So, but still, it's actually been a pretty solid design so far. So, this is the first time I've seen an arbitrary puzzle or an, an obtuse puzzle. Now, here we are in Scotland Yard. 
I'm going to look at things. A huge oak wood desk. From here, the duty officer assigns cases to constables and inspectors alike. The duty officer is not unlike a king of the police precinct, and this desk is his throne. Really good descriptions. Good day, Sergeant Duncan. I wish to speak to Inspector Lestrade. So would half the lads in Dartmoor Prison, Mr. Holmes. He's terrible busy at the moment, but with all the Ripper business, he left word out to be disturbed. Can I, can I take a message? I will need to speak with him myself. I dare not disturb him, Mr. Holmes. He left order special, like uh, another. As I was just saying, we haven't had many of them, but now we're just getting into. Uh, I can see Lestrade right there. I just want to go talk to him. Um. So okay, so this is kind of arbitrary. The inspector's hip deep in paperwork, the never ending scourge of a policeman's duty. He is oblivious to everyone else around, everything else around him. Uh, let's see what else we got here. This is the bullpen. Police procedures are not all excitement in bringing criminals to the bar of justice. The constables in the bullpen plod along, unrecognized and unappreciated, keeping the important records of the Metropolitan Police up to date. Looks like it's all bullpen stuff. Da, 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 da. So, double check that. Uh, you speak to it myself. Okay, just. There are certain crimes which are better left to establish police procedure, Watson. I assume you're referring to the mountain of paperwork these men are generating, Holmes. I am indeed. Well, Watson, we could stand here waiting for our hair to turn gray before the inspector gets a free moment. Do you have a suggestion? Didn't I notice your friend, the apple starge outside? He knows the Byzantine workings of the yard like the back of his hand, or so you've told me. Excellent suggestion, Watson. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, uh, this actually is a... Uh, I want to go back to the... the um, I know it, I've been talking about the game design a bit, but I think it's really worth noting here. That first puzzle of asking Watson to give me the laudanum, or sorry, the... the, the substance sort of medical state to, to calm the woman down uh, and then buried that as the last option I meaning it was encouraged me to play through those earlier questions to go oh watson's useful for giving me advice and suggestions when i'm stuck and so that played off very well right here it's like i'm not sure what to do next let's ask watson watson suggests something outside it makes really good sense um so this is actually a good design usually these kinds of games Jay mentioned earlier, sometimes a lot of the information is stuck in the manual. Um, and with the exception of the um, puzzle with, with the lab table, uh, this has actually been pretty good at signposting this is what you need to do next. Um, it's not obvious. It's, it, it still makes you feel a little clever because you thought to ask Watson as opposed to telling you, hey, go outside and talk to that guy. I, I decided to ask Watson, and then Watson suggested this, and now I'm going to do it. So I still feel like I'm the person driving, but it is actually kind of saying, okay, game wants you to go here now. Hello, Uggy. I need your advice on the matter concerning Scotland Yard. Ah, uh, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. What can I do for you? I can't get Sergeant Duncan to fetch Lestrade for me. Do you have a suggestion? I just might be able to help, if the price were right. I'm not in the habit of paying you ex your exorbitant prices, Augie. Well, we seem to be at an impasse. What do you say, Watson? Shall I grass on Augie? Why not, Holmes? Augie, tell me, tell me about Sergeant Duncan or I'll expose your little game to the police. Whatever you want about Mr. Holmes. You're not blind, doggy. You're shamming for sympathy. Does, does marvels for your business, I shouldn't wonder. I've seen the way your eyes move behind the glasses, and the way you arrange the apples to the cart, unblemished side out, requires sight. You never feel for the size of a coin or bite its head to metal. You hawk your wares more loudly when a well-dressed couple walks by, and not at all when a beggar rambles by. I've seen you accurately box the ears of a stealthy street urchin trying to steal an apple. And just a moment ago, you addressed a ring to Dr. Watson. There's no way you could have known he was there. Enough, Mr. Holmes. Just let's keep this amongst ourselves, shall we? Live and let live, eh? I'll tell you this about Duncan. The way you get Brute's heart is through a compliment. The man's a fool for flattery. Susceptible as a child to a kind word he is. Thank you, Augie. All right, let's go back inside. And maybe finally, finally, we'll be able to talk to this job. Side point. It is actually unclear whether it's pronounced Lestrade or Lestrade. Um, it has been pronounced both in various adaptations. Um, there is no commonly accepted uh, pronunciation. Uh, 
generally people defer to the way he was pronounced in the Basil Rathbone films, which is Lestrade, um, and that's why a lot of adaptations are usually drawing inspiration from that. Uh, but certainly there's some adaptations that do use Lestrade and use successfully. I tend to prefer Lestrade. Good day, Sergeant Duncan. Is the inspector available? He's still drowning in paperwork, Mr. Holmes. You should leave a message if you wish. Thank you. I'm sure an officer as distinguished as yourself and the winner of the VC on top of it knows when to supersede such an order on his own authority. Perhaps I could get him down here for just a moment. Inspector Westerrod, please report to the duty officer's desk immediately. There we go. Now Westerrod's going to come down here. What is it, Duncan? This had better be important. It is, Inspector. Here's Mr. Holmes to see you. Go talk to him. Um, rudimentary pathing. Uh, pathing, if those don't know, is um, the, the route that a person walks, and pathing on these is obviously still pretty rudimentary games. Um, they're still trying to figure out how all this works to a certain degree. Hello, Inspector. I'm glad we found you in. I would like to re you to release some items from the Caraway murder investigation. Remember why we started doing this? To get that key. What do you mean by some items? I'd like to examine some of Senator Caraway's personal effects which you sent to the morgue. If you don't mind, I'll take some of them from further my own investigation. Sarah Carraway, oh, you mean the Ripper's latest victim. That's an open and shut case as far as I'm concerned, but I know your methods by now, and I'm sure you won't be satisfied until you've beaten this case into the ground. Sergeant Duncan will write you a pass that you can give to the medical examiner at the morgue. If he's finished with the woman's effects, they're yours. Thank you, Inspector. Okay, now we can go back to the morgue again, get that key and whatever else we can grab, and go back to the theater and open that up to use a small key we found back at the flat and this is classic adventure game designs nested nested puzzles jay asks if you're sure it's open and shut why did you send the letters to homes in the first place well you see um <clears throat> uh, to be fair actually i will say that lestrade in some of the cases um will ask Holmes for help and then once he finds information he believes solves the case then goes well actually never mind i forgot it's, it, we didn't need you here. So that's not uncommon. Uh, but also, it's not uncommon for Lestrade to say, no, I totally got this, and then quietly meet Holmes privately to ask for information. Because Lestrade is kind of painted as not vain, but certainly he certainly has um, doesn't want to be seen as a buffoon. Uh, so uh, it's hard to tell how it's playing here, but I suspect it's kind of the... No, 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 I got it, but I suppose it's fine, even though I wrote you to do this. No, no, I want to talk to the coroner. Do that. May I view Sarah's personal effects again? Of course, Mr. Holmes. Pick up key. It says, I, I have authorization. Okay. All right. Let's see if Gregson can help me with that. Nope. Okay. Um, I think I missed something then. Let's go to the... Sergeant Duncan. Oh, I have to go back to Sergeant Duncan and get the pass. Ugh. Okay. That's on me. I, again, um, I'm used to more modern ones where that kind of thing would be just happen automatically. Um, that's on me. That's my fault. I, 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 I forgot the game I'm playing for a moment. Um, I should have specifically, I have to go to, to Duncan, ask specifically for the note to get it into my hands so I can then use it. Probably have to give it to the original morgue officer. Inspector Estrada has authorized my request to examine the Caraway woman's effects at the morgue. May I have a pass, please? I heard him, Mr. Holmes. I have it right here. Okay. Just to double check. Yep, there's the pass. This authorizes the bearer, one Sherlock Holmes, to uh, utilize the personal effects of a Miss Sarah Caraway. Signed, Scotland Jer Sergeant Jeremy Duncan, Officer of the Day, Scotland Yard. Alrighty. One more time. Uh, yeah, Jay, we did get the power to earlier. We got that um, from the corner the first, second time? One, one of the many times we went to the corner. Um, we got a little package of it. Um, that, that's probably my next step is to go to 221B and look into that. Um, 
but I mean, and this is also the thing is that this is a slightly more open-ended mystery. Um, it's not as as signposted as some more modern games. Um, my general style is I will try to run a, a, a set of clues into the grounds before I move on to the next. So you notice like I've ignored the perfume place, a couple of things, because in my experience, I found that you want to unlock as many options as possible, so that way you can go back to that place. Ideally, if you have uh, saying a question or interrogation with someone, you have as much information as possible. So I tend to prefer to try to follow one line of inquiry as long as possible so I run out and then follow another thread. Um, so I could have done other stuff in the middle of all of this, but I also prefer to kind of just run it down. So let's uh, give the pass to the coroner. This is authorization from Inspector Lestrade allowing me to use some of the effects from the Caraway investigation. Pick up. Pick up. Pick it up. There we go. Pick up large key. I need that item for further examination. You're welcome to it when I finished. Pick up the charm bracelet. He needs that. And pick up the silk handkerchief. He needs that. Okay, so it's just the key we're getting. And that's fine. That's all I wanted anyway. Finish these effects for now. Thank you. Um. Jay mentions, I, I remember in the Colonel's bequest, you could only see certain things happen at certain times, which means you pretty much couldn't solve without the walkthrough telling you to be in location X at time Y. Um, I, I was, I was going to get into this, but it's worth noting. There, there were a couple of text adventures, Sherlock Holmes based text adventures before this. Um, I didn't play them for a couple of reasons. One, it's really boring to watch words on a screen. It would just be a lot of me reading. Um, and at least for the first stream, I wanted to um, see a little more visual, visually interesting. Um, but the other one is that they had exactly that problem. At least one of them did. Um, the, the very first uh, Infocom, not, not, sorry, the only Infocom Sherlock Holmes game, um, uh, was very time-based. Uh, you had to, the characters that you work in the backgrounds at certain time frames, um, and each of your actions took a certain amount of time. So if you weren't in a certain place at a certain time, you could not actually progress and therefore could not solve the case. Um, so you had to learn not only what to accomplish, but in what order to do it and do it efficiently. So you played the game a lot over and over and over again. And I just do not have the time for that kind of design anymore. Um, so at some point, it just really takes off and people are really into it. I may play a little bit of that to show people how it works. Um, but it's it's a slog. Um, so Gregson, uh, to make sure there's nothing else here. Nope, it's all gray. Let's head back out. Now we can go back to the theater, which is right here. Although it's called Alley, um, it has the mask, which helps you remember it's a theater, but yeah, minor point. Um, oh, hey, there, there it is. Um, again, I'm, I'm, these are just quibbles, honestly. I mean, I'm really, once you get into the structure of all this, it, it's it's not that bad. This is actually really really cool. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you agree, Yodan. I I, I I understand why I was assigned this time. Uh huh. What? Who's there? Oh, it's you, Mr. Holmes. What can I do for you? So Mr. Crothers is here. Um, but yeah, no, I I understand why the design was at the time. Uh, I respect it. I appreciate it. Um, but it's not something I enjoy playing anymore. Um, that's what I'm hoping to do with this this sequence of things. If, if I do more than this game, um, I have uh, a lot of other games, primarily the uh, the Frogwares uh, games, which I'll talk about when I get playing those. Uh, but there's about another six or seven of them from around 2007 to now. Um, so you can see kind of from this jump ahead about roughly 10, 15 years, um, see how this style has evolved and then how it goes from the point-click style to more and more uh, uh, mystery design, so you can see kind of how Sherlock Holmes evolves as a as a um, as a game design. Um, uh, so there's some interesting uh, stuff you can learn there, uh, but I want to start here because this is really the most accessible point I think for playing uh, Sherlock Holmes video games. Uh, so let's see if Crowther says anything new for us before we start poking around and stuff. Uh, no, okay. Used the small key, brass key. On the chest of drawers. Uh, you know, Jay, I've not actually played any of the Nancy Drew games. I probably should. There's like 20 of them. There's a ton of them. I should probably play them at some point. I haven't done yet. Also, that's something I was making is like maybe moving to other uh, mystery games. Like, I actually have been debating the, the Gabriel Knight games um, because it's another iconic uh, mystery video game. 
Um, but there are other really solid mystery games that aren't necessarily Sherlock Holmes games. Um, so I think I may at some point try it too. Let's look at the top drawer. The contents are mostly uninteresting. Facial makeup tins and some old theater playbills. A special interest is a pair of opera tickets. Can I pick up the contents of the top drawer? I can. Look, Watson, a pair of seasonal tickets to the opera. It would seem that Miss Carraway's interest in the arts extended beyond the confines of theater. Very commendable. I say, Holmes, even though opera tickets are almost impossible to attain at any price, I shouldn't ha like to have the seats. Oh. Uh, I just went too fast. Um, so basically, it's the home, Watson was reluctant to steal tickets. Uh, I could put them back where I found them. I assume you're reluctant, but these are tickets. Maybe very well lead. So I'm going to take, yeah, take tickets. I assume you're reluctant, Watson, but these tickets very well provide the lead we need to further investigation. Excuse me, Mr. Crothers. Do you know anything about these opera tickets? Unless I missed my guess, Mr. Holmes, these are tickets to the Chancery Opera House. Sarah never missed an opportunity to hear her sister sing. You mean Mrs. Carraway's sister is here in London? Just so, Doctor. She sings all the leading female roles. Very good, I'm told. I would have thought that you would do about her. It's sufficient that we know now. Thank you, Mr. Carruthers. May we take these tickets? Of course, Mr. Holmes. I shouldn't think Inspector Ostrad has any use for them. We never even asked me about Anna. So it is Anna, not Hannah. You know that piece, too. There's little of interest here. Some writing paraphernalia and some yellowing miscellaneous pages from long, mercifully forgotten scripts. Holmes, the theater critic. Um, the thing we take there. Okay. Um, so uh, we've got a lot of options here. Um, uh, we've got some other avenues of investigation, but we've run this down. Um, so I think we're going to go ahead and uh, call it uh, there for right now. It's been a couple of hours. Um, so uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this and appreciated this. Um, uh, as I mentioned online, uh, this is going to be pretty ad hoc. As I've got time, I'll, I'll jump in um, and do this. Um, so I'll recap where we're at uh, each time I, I play this as we go into the case. Um, I have some other games kind of in queue that are a little shorter, uh, so I can probably knock those out in a game session. Uh, but this, because usually these mysteries are pretty long, um, I'm probably going to break it up into chunks. So next time I get I decide to get online, um, we'll start with part two. We'll save the game here. Um, and we'll call it there. So, uh, uh, thank you guys for hanging out in the chat. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have more questions, you can find me uh, on Twitter uh, at uh, Eddie Fate, E D D Y F A T E. That's my personal Twitter account. That's where I'm talking about Sherlock Holmes stuff. Um, if you want to talk about my game design stuff or any of my professional things, uh, you can find me at pugsteady.com. Uh, my Twitter professionally is pugsteady, P U G S T E D D Y. Um, the website is S T A E A D Y. Um, and, but yeah, just uh, uh, go ahead and follow this channel. Um, whenever I go on live, you'll see that notification. And if you have any thoughts, uh, I appreciate hearing them. But otherwise, uh, thank you for your time, and I'll chat with you all later.